Hello everybody. This is the third part of the project implementation of NFC modules and FPGA. In this part, we are going to implement the NFC modules as a part of hardware in the Verilog. And uh, we are going to demonstrate the working using SignalTap logic analyzer and also using the model sim. So let's start with the first module that is the PCD. Um, so here you can see that there are a list of files already uploaded. So let's see the PCD.v here. In this file, this is a module which is the reader, which is and Manchester is the module for the encoder. And both these are being connected from the PCD top. And also we are using a PLL. Uh, the PLL is just the same like uh, my project partner Pooja had explained in the video part one, wherein she had implemented it using the QC system. So, and here the clock reset global enable is given to the PLL enable pin. Like this is the PLL enable, wherein whenever the global enable is asserted. The PCD module is asserted and then the clock starts generating for the Manchester and PCD and as well as the PCD is activated to start giving the um, request in and request out I'm sorry and uh, the attention. So let's compile this code and see that um, how these work together. I'll show you a short, um, a short demo on this with the help of uh, modelism. So let's compile this first and uh, so this as you can see the PCD is there is a state machine implemented for that wherein the PCD goes from a reset till it is waiting for the request to come in and then when it receives it asserts a signal called as request out. Here is the implementation. In the Manchester encoder, the, uh, the output of the PCB is, is given to the Manchester encoder, which it, which is, uh, it encodes the D out. This is the D out signal, which is the encoded signal. And uh, so the Manchester works like Whenever there is a 1, the output goes from 1 to 0, there is a pulse. Mm -hmm. Whenever it is 0, it goes from 0 to 1. So now we are running the model sim. I have already written a test bench for it. There is ATQA in here after the global enable that is reset. The ATQA is only high for two pulses, and that is why the reset out is modulated. Like you can see, when it is zero, it goes from zero to one, zero to one, zero to one. This is the output from the Manchester encoder. And after compilation, you can see the I show you the logic elements and the combinational elements it's using. So it's 523, 525 logic registers and the 503 combination functions it's using. So this was a brief uh, demo for the PCD module. PCD is meaning the reader. And um, let's now see the demo for our another module that is PICC. So PICC is a tag which is a passive device. Now you could see that there are few more files in here too, just as the um, PCD. So there is a top level file 
the top level file has the following modules that is PLL, there is a PICC, and our encoder. So our encoder, the encoder basically even in PCD and PICC use a faster clock than the uh, PCD or the PICC. That is why we uh, we need the PLL. So this gen on the output of the PLL, the PICC, or the PCD are running and the uh, Encoders are running on the provided clock, and the so the difference in the clock is the the generated clock is divided by two from the input. So let's see what are the compilation results here. test bench where the request is given in a sequential manner so that the pattern is detected by the PICC okay our compilation is in the assembler state and this is the top level as well where the PLL is PCD and the modified Miller is connected okay so now the compilation is complete. Let's see what are the modules, how many logic elements is needed. So it needs a needs few less elements than the PCD. It's 626. So now I'll show you the demo how it, the entire system runs. So after compilation, now let's see uh, the model sim output. Here we run it. As you can see here, the encoded data is out whenever there is request, a single stream of request, and then it is asserted. So, it is being reset here. So, this was the demo for the PICC. And the PICC uses the Miller encoder. Now to check whether the um, whether the system runs on the hardware as well, we decided to use another way of uh, detection, and that is the signal tap. So. We are using we are using signal tap to check whether it works on the uh, system. So it is <coughs> so we are using signal tap for our modified Miller encoder, and um, for that we need to assign the pins for so the clock which is given as a 12 then there is another clock and the reset pin all these are the input so signal tap is basically a logic analyzer on in the system as in the in our own system so it usually needs a clock to run on so 
uh, let me explain the windows which you will see when you open the signal tap key so here it is the instant manager where it shows that how many logic element it needs for the signal tap on your board this one is the jta configuration whereas where you need to set up the usb blaster so it detects your device so as you can see it was detected and um, so coming coming to the signal configuration so here it is a clock switch here we show which clock it is going to use to run on the system so here uh, we changed the design entry and then we list it coming down so these so there are two clocks in the system we are using the faster one and the slower one so we are going to trigger on the we are going to capture on the clock so the pin a1 so we selected select it and then we put it there okay here it is as you can see and the sample depth now this sample depth is determined uh, determines how many samples we are going to take so 1k is the sample depth that means the our memory should be having 1k of space to capture the data incoming during the triggers and here the second part is the trigger wherein you, there are different flow control for state or sequential now since this design runs on the sequential this is a sequential design so we use it sequential there are three types of trigger conditions four center and three we are using a three and you can even trigger on some conditions to be given here this window here is the data and the setup wherein if you double click here we can add different nodes to your design to be checked and again the same thing you filter out all your design names then you list it whichever signal you want to uh, check you can select and just push it in like this so it's already been assigned here that's why i'm going to cancel it and so if you see here there are four different things to be displayed the name enable triggers and the trigger conditions so in here the clock too so i am triggering on the rising edge there are different options either you don't care no so we use the rising edge and the reset we are using either pulse of the reset now as i told you before we are using the um, switch for reset instead of a uh, pulse signal so we press the key and then we generate the reset okay so it's and let's compile the project for save it so it saved now it says compile the project mm. Now the logic analyzer here gets downloaded on your design and so you need to resynthesize that is why we compile it and we program it again and it has to fit in a project as well that is, and that is why the sample depth as i showed you before is important to be a number which can fit on your fpga and um, also uh, make sure that the higher the sampling frequency of the signal you are going to get more data samples and that to more often and that is why you need more memory on the to capture the transition details and uh, once you download on the board there is the another window right next to the setup window here this is the data window where once you download it it gets triggered and then you set it up so the compilation is complete you can see and let's program the device uh, okay so here we start the programming and it's done now to check whether it is correctly running or not how do we know whether it is downloaded and it can actually run or not so that is why we use the signal tap 
So we go to the data. There are no samples since it does not know what to do. And since I don't know, there are so many numbers here. So we specify it the time units to be 10 nanoseconds. So this, uh, this is important so that you could uh, actually understand. run it let's trigger it there you go so this is what it captured and here it is so after the reset pulse there was the encoded data out the data in given was zero now if you connect a data into another signal where like a switch so whenever that you can even trigger on the data in like how i triggered here for reset on any trig on any edge that and you can trigger for data in as well. So we have only taken the data in to be zero and as you can see here it is it is modulating it and it is encoding it. So this is this is how we come to know that our encoder is actually working in the hardware. That being said, in this compilation report, you could see that the single, only the modified, only this encoder needs 529 logic elements. Whereas, if you consider our PICC or where the modified Miller is the part of this uh, big module, this takes 623 logic elements. That means the logic analyzer is taking up a lot of memory so we need to keep in mind um, that there is enough memory and it can be fitted on the fpga so this was a short demo on the logic analyzer and how we uh, debugged our codes running on hardware thank you everybody goodbye